Premium Deluxe, Standard, Game Pass, Lidl's Basic Brand. In this video, we're going to be talking about the different versions of Microsoft Flight Simulator and which version is likely to be best for you. Welcome back to the Game of Muscle YouTube channel and welcome to the beautiful city skyline of Tokyo because we are flying above Tokyo here whilst I talk about these different versions and which one is likely to be best for you. So out of the gate, uh, first of all, I'm going to say, obviously, if you're a hardcore flight sim fan, you know, a, a mental flight simist, <laughs> you know, obviously, you'll just get the premium deluxe version. You're used to being absolutely ramshackled without lubrication when it comes to the price of flight sim uh, game simulators and stuff. For the £110 that it costs and what you get in that, it's a no-brainer. And this, this video is really not for, for you hardcore flight sim people. You'd, you'd already made your mind up a year ago. <laughs> you, they could have charged like £300 for it and you'd be like, yep, getting it, don't care. So this video is not for you guys. Go away, you're not welcome on this channel, you, you filthy pilots. Get out of here. So who this video is really for, and, uh, you know, this advice probably applied to the most, is uh, people that are... Uh, either super on the fence casuals and then people like me that just love simulators but uh, don't class themselves as uh, flight sim crazies and so first of all i'd say if you're you know you've seen all the the hype and stuff with microsoft flight simulator you're like oh look at those clouds look at the weather look at the cities i want to i want to explore a little bit but i don't know if i like simulators and i'm more of a gamer and there's not that many missions in here so i don't know if it'll really if it'll really uh, after the buzz and the hype's faded off i don't know if it'll really appeal to me um also i don't know if my computer can run it <laughs> um you know for those people i would 100 percent recommend getting microsoft flight simulator on game pass uh, for the PC Game Pass beta, which you can actually do for a pound at the moment, and that gets you the the full basic version of the game at launch um, for for a pound. Effectively, it's a pound a month, so obviously cancel it after a month if you don't want to stay on the Game Pass and you don't like the game. But that would just make sense to do. I mean, it's the type of game where I th I, I think like the, the Steam two hour thing is not going to be long enough for you to try it out and make your mind up because once you've downloaded it on Steam, the game's going to update itself and it's a sort of 90 gig or so update, which will probably take about an hour, maybe longer <laughs> to get that initial update. So uh, yeah, don't count on the Steam two hour thing. The Game Pass situation will allow you to put probably about, I, I would say you need, it'll probably take about 10 hours of playing it, setting up your controls, loading into it, getting it to run nice, and then doing a bit of flying. After 10 hours, you will know, is this the kind of game I'm going to keep playing? Or, you know, does it just not make sense to me? You know, it'll either click or it won't. 10 hours, you'll either be fully infected and incurable with the flight disorder, such as myself, <laughs> or, or you will uh, find out that you're immune and you can go back to your life and enjoy racing simulators and Call of Duty or where, you know, whatever you enjoy playing. I'm not going to judge you. I have actually judged you. If you like Call of Duty over flight sims, get out. <laughs> but, you know, uh, so that that Game Pass uh, really makes sense for those of you that kind of want a, a good solid demo of it to make up your mind. So that's casual, casual category people, people with uh, a system that you're not sure how well it's going to run. Obviously, they put their spec on the website, but you might not be happy with how it runs at that spec. Try Game Pass. Give that, give that a blast. Now, the second category of people would be people like me that are not hardcore flight simists, but we love... I love simulators. I love physics games. I love the travelling and uh, weather, clouds, grass, you know. I, but I'm not a hardcore flight simmer. And so for people like me, what I would say is, really, this standard edition is going to be the the most sense to buy um because the only difference between the standard edition the deluxe and the premium deluxe is that you get um you get additional airplanes and uh airports with the uh, standard premium deluxe so the deluxe edition you get five more planes and five more uh, airfields handcrafted airfields and premium deluxe you get another you get another five uh, another five on top of that um the thing is the bog standard airport, so Microsoft Flight Simulator has basically every airport in the world in it. The bog standard airports in this look fine. Unless you're like a crazy flight cinema type person, the bog standard airports in this that haven't been handcrafted 
a great. <laughs> You're not going to be landing them going, oh, no. Jesus, this airport looks terrible. And at the end of the day, even if you bought the Super Duper Dingleberry Deluxe Edition, well, that's another 10 airports isn't another 30,000 airports, you know. So you're still going to be landing at the basic airports anyway. And then when it comes to the aeroplanes, the basic version has enough planes in there to cover the range of flying dynamics and characteristics. Oh, like a, big, a passenger jet, a small propeller plane, small jet plane, icon you know the range of planes so that you can experience all the physics the range of physics basically and handling characteristics and approaches to flight that you can you can enjoy all of that with the with the basic version so uh, yeah it, it just doesn't make sense if you're money conscious to bother with the deluxe or the uh, premium deluxe version the only the only thing that would i would say would negate that for simists <laughs> like me would be if um, if you take off from a you know you live in an area where you want to take off from a specific airport that happens to be in the premium deluxe or the deluxe edition. So only the premium deluxe, I believe, has uh, Heathrow Airport uh, handcrafted. As I say, the non-handcrafted version which looks fine anyway, but only the premium deluxe one has Heathrow. So if there's a local airport to you or an airport you particularly want to experience, you're gonna be landing there all the time and everything. Then that might sway it for you. But other than that, I, I you know, I, 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 don't, I just, I, I would save the money, uh, personally. Um, I, w if it was me buying it, I definitely would have just got the, uh, the, the standard version if I wasn't a filthy YouTuber that got given the game for free <laughs> to cover on this channel. Hate YouTubers. That's my pro tip. Look at Tokyo, guys. I mean, Jesus. Jeez, Louise, absolutely stunning again again this is this is what it will look like in the basic version of the game you know you're gonna get this with the standard version of the game i mean what <laughs> what <laughs> what this is this is 2020 gaming guys what <laughs> look, at this, look at all those buildings my brain can't take it in too many buildings Imagine how much grass is down there as well. It's incredible. Look at the clouds. Look at the light coming. Ah, oh, look at the city skyline in the gap in the clouds. This should. Be, this game is going to be the new crisis, <laughs> the new uh, graphical crisis test of the new uh, frame rate benchmark. Um, although weirdly, it actually seems to run relatively well on a range of systems. There's quite a few people who've been playing it now on uh, 2070s with uh, mid-end CPUs, uh, three, three seven hundred AMD 3700s, three, I think that's right, 3600, I was getting mixed up, and they're getting like 40 plus uh, FPS on medium settings, so I'm on a 2080 Ti and uh, 3900X, and I kind of get uh, between 55 and uh, 70 FPS on, on ultra settings, it, it massively depends on the time of day location and everything but uh for a flight sim it actually actually runs really amazing really consistently uh surprised how well they've uh, the performance they managed to get out of it but yeah i mean i I've, in terms of the actual versions though the, the only people to get the premium deluxe one you've got enough disposable income where you just don't care <laughs> and uh you're a massive flight sim fan or the airport is there's an airport in there you specifically want to land at a lot um, the, the other thing worth saying um, is uh, if you buy it through the Microsoft Store, you do get the advantage that the game is one of those cross games where it's uh, it's not angry, but it's on both the Microsoft... Uh, it's on that Microsoft uh, cross thing. So if you buy it on the, game, on the Windows shop, you can also use it on the Xbox. If you ever get one of the new Xboxes, uh, you know, which might be quite appealing to certain people. Like, if your PC's sort of mid or low end, and you know you're going to be getting a new games console, um, then you know, I'd imagine this will run really nicely on the new on the new Xbox when that comes out. So that you know, that could be um, buying it on the Microsoft Store instead of Steam might make more sense. And also, the advantage of the Steam Store is typically the whole preloading and the download system of Steam. Obviously, having it organized in one place, but I'm a huge fan of Steam as well. I'd much rather have Steam than Microsoft Store. But um, the, this basically, when you download this on Steam, I, I think this is how it's going to work. It would seem this way, just because of the nature of the game. Uh, 
you basically then launch the game and then it downloads the content in the game itself so even if you've if you bought it on Steam, you're still going to have to download stuff through the game. It's not like Steam's going to manage that component for you. So you lose one of the big benefits of, of Steam, really. Um, and, it, and as I say, it's worth keeping in mind that when this first comes out, you will have a 90 or so gig down, update download. Um, so, uh, yeah, be prepared to wait on launch day. <laughs> There's going to be some people that are itching to play it. And then they'll be like, oh, got to wait for it to download. And it does take quite a while. And the servers are probably going to get hammered. And then separate to that, obviously a lot of the environments in this, well, if you've got it on the highest detail, it's always downloading anyway. So again, it's not using the Steam networks for that. But, uh, you know, I mean, I hope that helps you guys that were wondering about which version to get. Um, if it did, you know what to do. You've got to, well, you don't have to. Look at all those buildings. I can't believe that that renders at a frame rate that's passable. Um, we'll land it. We're going to land the plane. But, you know, if you enjoy this video and you want to see more sim flight sim content, you know, you can uh, subscribe, click that bell and all that business. And you can click the like button as well. It's entirely up to you. And the bridges look great as well. We will have more flight sim uh, content on the way. I'm just going to land on this runway here. <laughs> he says landing on the taxiway. It's worth, it's worth actually saying, before we do land, all the multiplayer features and everything else is all in the standard version as well. So, uh, you know. It's going to be it's gonna be really interesting with this to see uh, how... Like, it looks like a lot of the modding and the uh, separate, like, commercial... The additional commercial... Com uh, component of flight simming it's gonna be interesting to see how that all moves across to uh, microsoft flight simulator because it's already started to happen i'm a little bit worried for, for x-plane 10 how not to land don't trust anything i say i land like a drunk but you know even that even with the standard version you're still gonna be able to put the mods and everything in as well so you know i'll take it smooth landing so there you go guys <laughs> that's a good tokyo landing i've now lost my pilot's license if you've got any questions in the comments shoot them shoot shoot us the questions in the comments and i'll uh, try my best i'll endeavor my best to answer them but until the next video thanks for watching everyone happy uh, tea drinking happy flying and goodbye